Oh, what is up down and sideways, all you fine feather individuals? It is Lee Gonlock, Eric, and Mark here with you beauties for what is probably going to be our final global power rankings before we dive into the madness, the chaos that is MSI. Because yes, the midseason invitational sneaking up again. We only have two teams qualified, but we're just over a month away from things kicking off. You know, it seems every year, no matter how many times you try to remind yourself there's an international event coming around the corner, it's it's going to be here sooner rather than later at some point. MSI, you get stuck in with all these leagues, with everything happening in the regular season, moving from split to split in the LEC, the playoff situation, all these things. It's easy to forget that it's still on that schedule, coming on up. It's going to be here, guys, pretty darn soon. May 1st. Got to get ready. And most of these squads, of course, will not be there, even though they're on that top 20. And as we head towards the playoffs now in the LPL, we got a couple of squads making their season debut on this top 20. And there's a couple, you know, IG now has a bad losing streak. WE's been in a little bit of a slump. So OMG takes that 20 spot. But honestly, those three squads could be 20, 21, 22. I'll accept any of that trio, right? Is that cycling through of, of what you are picking as kind of that barrier, that entry for the top 20 of an LPL team, right? That's what you're looking at when you're talking about these three teams and really taking your pick. I'm going to roll with OMG at this point. The way that things have gone kind of, you know, this continued a little bit of a slide for IG. I still don't think necessarily slapping the big fraud stamp on them is is where we are right now with them. I think NIP is certainly getting get that ink ready on that stamp is the way you're looking at some of these ones. But you got WE, you got OMG as you laid out. These are the guys that are going to be one of these teams that if you're sleeping on it all in the LPL playoffs, going to make some damage happen. Yeah, it's always there's at least one that's going to be making a deep dark horse run over in the LPL. I mean, BLG originally did it and then they just became contenders perennially in the LPL for the next year and a half plus. So maybe there's another squad that'll be sliding into that. Uh, Team Vitality is the latest in the swing of musical chairs when it comes to that third team from the LEC. And they've done what you wanted to see from this Vitality team, this split. I think this is one of those ones where it's conservative, but it is that step forward in that right direction, continuing to build off of last split, off of the positives, off the good signs, the sunshine that we saw come through on this team. You're starting to see that in this split. You're really seeing, I think, the bottom lane find their synergy, really find how they're working together, even if you've got a couple of whoopsie moments, but that's how it, ha how it goes with these players. And then you go to the mid lane. I think that's really the big strong point for me is Viteo really, again, emerging as that MVP caliber player. That's the important part here for Vitality. Continues to live up to that EU Chobi namesake of just having absolute monstrous CS numbers on multiple uh, different champions. Team Liquid gets a bump back, even though um, they haven't really done anything wrong, but we got to just reward the king of the eight and eight squads in the LPL. That is Weibo Gaming returning to this top 20, obviously mostly riding high off that 2-0 series win over GDG. And again, if this is going to be the Weibo Gaming that is going to arrive at playoffs, they're a threat. They are a threat at that situation in the LPL. I don't care how underestimated you want to put them at this point. You see Xiaohu performing like that, turning back the clock again. We had questions whether we were going to see that level of performance from him like we did last year. If he can carry that type of way for this team, they will be a threat to reckon with in the OPL. And they're hoping that they're a bigger threat than those. We're not putting a fraud title. We're putting a sus title on ninjas in pajamas. They matched up against top esports. And listen, it's a tough schedule when you're going BLG into TES to be wrapping up your regular season. And they had avenues, maybe coulda, woulda, shoulda, maybe had a chance to win game one. They're pushing that bottom inhibitor before uh, TES kind of comes online. But despite not looking so great over the last couple of weeks, NIP, they still have 10 wins. They still have a buy into that first round of playoffs. And you still feel like either WE or OMG, surely they're still better than them, right? 
I don't know at this point. That's the way it's got to play out. You're looking at this one. I think that's the danger territory in this LPL playoffs is this is where you start because you've listed out already WE, OMG, that's type of territory. Can you handle it at this point if you're NIP and you have been on a little bit of this slide, a little bit of that fraud watch? It was a better overall performance against uh, Top Esports today, even if it is that 0-2 in favor of Top Esports. I think this was a good lesson for Mr. Shanji up in the top side. I love my boy, and I think that he is still one of the developing top laners of the LPL. Got a bit of a beatdown by your boy 369. Uh, by the way, 369 should be an absolute lock on everyone's ballot for the first pro, first team all pro top laner over Bin, over anybody else. It should be 369 we're talking about as that premier uh, top lane action in the LPL. And that was case in point showcased again today against NIP. The fact that even Kwang Dong is a spot ahead of them, we're not feeling great about Kwang Dong. This is kind of where... The bubble in these rankings of are you actually feeling good about this team because ahead of them are cloud nine who have the two most polarizing series you could possibly have after that smackdown of 100 thieves we're feeling great about them and then they get smacked in their own right by FlyQuest. so we need another series which cloud nine is it Doing enough of these top 20 lists, you learn the ebbs and flow of how these things go. And sometimes you got a top 20 that is filled with the hottest teams in the world. It is all about the power and everyone's looking great. Other times you have as you just laid out. Kwang Dong Freaks as that bubble. Cloud9 just ahead in that situation. This is that territory where it starts, just starts to heat up. You know, it's lukewarm. Maybe it was microwaved a little bit ago type of stuff before. Now we're starting to get it's fresh off the stove. It's ready to go. Cloud9, they're just on that stove. They're just starting to get that heat back on because somebody took them off the stove last weekend is the way that you got to be looking at this one, how they were dismantled and really roughed up by the FlyQuest squad. Ahead of them, you got someone who set, they got the set into broil. You got to be paying attention or this stuff's going to get burned because LNG has the big climb of the week. They are the complete opposite of IG in the fact that they now have a five game win streak heading into playoffs. That is second only to BLG in the LPL. And after their abysmal start, we're sitting here talking about them having a bye into round two. And, and it's just preposterous that this is able to happen lng what a winning streak that they have been able to put together the big guys scout gala you hear us talk about them all the time i think zika up in the top side has been an improvement i think they they found angles lng has been a big thing why they've been able to be a more complete team during this win streak is one of the big things that you're looking for and uh, you laid it out you're getting a buy in playoffs after what was like a two and five, two and six or something type of start for this LNG squad. Insane turnaround from them in the LPL. You are right. This team is scorching red hot. And even though it took them almost a full game and a half to really come online and get things rolling against Rare Adam today. Uh, Gala, some immaculate team fighting on the Jinx to turn some things around. There was a double ace at one point in this series. So even though it wasn't a clean, calm, collected Easy 2-0 against Rare Adam. The win streak lives on, and we're feeling real good about LNG heading towards these playoffs. D-plus and Fnatic both get pulled down a spot, got some losses in their regular season finale. Fnatic went 1-2. and D-plus now kind of limping into playoffs with a four-game losing streak. Yeah, this is not the best look for D-plus key. And after at one point, they kind of set themselves up with these last two weeks of the LCK where they either had that prove that we are someone that you're going to have to worry about in these LCK playoffs or if we are on the outside looking in type of situation. And that's kind of where I feel that's the line drawn in the LCK. D plus Kia, KT on that borderline of will they have a chance to be competitive in these playoff series? Because of the how heavy that top side of the LCK is going to be that we're looking at. This is where you find yourself if you are one of these D-plus Kia teams. But really, I'm looking at these playoffs for experience for Lucid. That's the biggest thing for me is, is judging and gauging 
his level of impact and performance in the series for D plus as you move on and as you look eyes towards hopefully a continued improvement in summer. They're going to be the underdogs in their matchup against KT, but hey, never fully discount Showmaker and D plus even without Canyon when it comes to playoffs. Wouldn't be shocked if they level up and get a series win against KT, but really hard pressed to see them going any further than that. The alarm bells are going off. It's it's an alert. It's an emergency. We have an LCS team in the top 10, Mark. It's FlyQuest. We're, we're giving them the double thumbs up. They are rewarded for the 3-0 beatdown, outclass, top to bottom, team play, macro, micro, everything. They were all over Cloud9 and deservingly so of a three-spot climb. They were so active in that series and making sure that the advantages were going to go their way. They were going to be prepared all the way through top to bottom. Everybody knew the task ahead of them. This was fantastic from FlyQuest. Really an excellent example this weekend. And I think there is something to talk about. Some underperformance, some, some bad things on the side of Cloud9 in that series that leads it to be so much in favor of FlyQuest, but there is no denying, and I don't want to take away any of the appreciation for what was accomplished by this team, by those individual players. I think a lot of people are, are finally starting to again jump back on the Bwipo hype train with what he was able to do and how he was dominant in that series. I don't think anybody should have left the hype train for Inspired and what type of role he can play in the jungle and difference making that he's been able to do. Jensen with one of, if not pr probably, arguably his best playoff performance against Jojo Pion dishing it out against the youngster and then you go down to the bottom lane and Busio continues to sprout continue to develop as that support and Masu alongside him we're starting to see more of those signs of that talent that earned him this role on the team this is a fly quest that I can confidently and there's not too many times sometimes it's maybe a little bit of the oversell on a North American team this fly quest team I'm confident in putting in that top 10. And this, I believe this is the first time we've had an LCS team actually crack the top 10. It's been FlyQuest mostly hovering around, but this is the best performance basically in three straight games that we've seen out of them in the entire split. So absolutely, I know everyone loves to hate on the LCS, but you got to give FlyQuest the credit where it is due. And now look how close they are to G2. They were as high as six at one point, but now another week where we're not pumping the brakes, but we don't have our foot on the gas and G2's kind of just coasting and we're seeing now as playoffs, are we going to step back on the gas or are we just going to keep coasting slower and slower till we stop? It's a situation where maybe domestic rankings, there wasn't enough that happened and there wasn't enough, you know, firepower from the rest of the LEC that this was going to be that costly, you know, drop down demotion for a team like G2. Global power rankings, a little bit different. You do get a little bit of that slide and a couple other squads moving ahead of them because of, of that sloppiness that we have seen to close out this split before we're heading towards playoffs of G2. But I brought it up when we talked about regional power rankings. Do you buy in that this is the legitimate slump? One of these ones that we see every, oh, pretty much every year annually with G2 at some point to go through some type of stretch where they slump it out, they sort it out, and then you're fine type later on. It's still one of the top contending teams in the European region. Or do you just say that, yeah, it's a blip. They're going to recorrect themselves totally fine. They're going to get the best ofs. Eventually, the talent pulls their way through, and it's just another G2 split. Why are we sweating this out? It's that 50-50. Take your pick. I'll accept either one. But G2 does have to accept the penalties of their losses where they slip a bit in the rank. And the truth is, until they're fully eliminated from playoffs they're probably not even getting bumped out of the top 10 unless it's a double elib loss which could happen if they play like they did in some of the games uh this past week especially the rogue one you know they did not look very good but fully expecting them to turn things on for that best stuff but yes kt bumps into that eight spot ahead of them and they had the head-to-head -head against hanwa who is sitting very cozy in that sixth spot even though kt lost that series uh at least one probably two of the games it was just game three where Hama really ran away with it but the first two were incredibly competitive kt also two zeros kwang dong so they do enough to get a little nudge towards playoffs 
Yeah, and I think when we're talking about KT and where their power level is, it's it's harder to get hyped about them because of the situation in the LCK with a Gen G, a T1, a Hanwha Life, all these type of things. But KT has done enough to climb out of the little slide they found themselves in uh, in midway through this LCK split to get back to a, a point where you are considering their power level. You're starting to look at these type of things. You're starting to gauge the heat of this lineup because players like Piosic has rebounded. BDD definitely rebounded for this squad. All Piosic needed was more Ramis games. Who knew? <laughs> I, uh, and Perfect D of the top yeah. side, he's continuing to gain experience, gain exposure in the LCK. And he's showing that, you know what? At the very least, that base level is going to be someone that can compete. Can we push it even further? Only time is going to tell in more experience for, for someone like that. But with KT right now, that's where I've checked in with them before playoffs. And again, feeling good about them in their matchup against D+. They will and should be favorites uh, in that one. Sandwich in between them, FPX wrapped up their regular season series uh, with another win to go to 11-5. and five. And that's, that's a round three berth for these guys. Rookie Mr. Milky Way has got a wait a week or so until he's playing his first playoff match and you know what there might have been a time where people would have questions of whether this would be it too long of a break he'll cool it down there's no way he's gonna remain hot milky ways is is it he is him man he's gonna be there he's gonna be performing for this fpx team 11 and 5 as you laid out we had hoped we would have seen maybe 12 and 4 from this team but 12 and 4 11 and 5 that is bonkers for what was the expectation for this lineup and what they were going to be able to accomplish they have roared onto the scene in the lpl and demanded and grabbed that attention from these top level teams ain't nobody in their right mind was calling fpx a top four team even even a month in to this season so big kudos to them for absolutely shutting down all of these different haters you must be accustomed to this top five now. I feel like it's been two months that it's been the same five. But once again, the main flip-flopping going on is between JDG and Top Esports. It was TES with a much better game score who eventually claimed that second overall spot. They 2-0 NIP to wrap things up. That combined with JDG dropping that series to Weibo is enough for TES to take that four spot back. It might be a little unfair, but it's just flat out the three six nine difference. You know, yep. JDG, you had you you got to enjoy that difference last year. Someone else has turned this time, and it's top esports, and they are really, really enjoying having three six nine on this roster and what type of power he's operating on and the consistency that he has delivered the results for this team. That's a big part of it. When you're looking at the the separation between the two, I think JDG absolutely has shown us that they are going to be one of these elite teams again in the LPL. They're not going to be that runaway elite level team that we saw that they were able to complete as a team with 369, with Knight in the mid lane, losing those players, the changes. It, it's not able to equal out to that exact same type of power. There's still a heck of a lot of power there on that team. And you underestimate them in any type of situation. Ruler's going to be mighty quick to make sure that you're in the gray screen simulator, man. And this ain't no slump in regular season, Kanavi. This dude led the way in terms of MVPs among all players in the LPL. So he's coming in fine form uh, for the playoffs. Both of these squads, nobody is going to be wanting to draw or match up in TES or JDG. Ever since T1 dropped that second matchup to Gen G, then they lose to Hanwa. I feel like the hype has so died for this squad after it was so high and they were number one on this list for so long now all of a sudden it seems like it's a written prophecy that they're just going to lose to gen g in playoffs anyways just wait for t1 to get their first playoff series and if they come out roaring out of the gates they've come out cooking in that t1 staff cook a kitchen making sure that we've got those drafts nice and spicy for t1 you're going to see a lot of people jumping right back onto that bandwagon because they're going to see signs of the T1 run that was just happening at the World Championship, how they're able to put together these best of series, have the confidence in their pick and read on the meta. You get into that type of zone, that's exactly where T1 builds up that hype again and people will start to doubt 
Gen G. And I think that's a little unfair because Gen G, all they have done is anything you could ask for them at this point to ease those doubts, ease any concerns or worries that you might still have about choking when the moment is the most important. This is a Gen G that is showing that you should have your trust in them through this LCK playoffs and even at an international event. They are the two top teams. And there's a decent chance T1's going to get redemption opportunity, probably right away against Hanwha. Assuming, you know, the first round plays out how you expect, there's no way Genji's picking Hanwha over either KT, D+, whoever uh, wins that series. So it's more than likely going to be T1 Hanwha in that semifinal matchup, fresh off of Hanwha taking down T1. Uh, the fresh... The two spots are still the same. Gen G, as you mentioned, sitting pretty in that number one. And BLG is face pressed against the window, looking at Gen G, just pointing at them, waiting for MSI to take them down again. Oh my God. Nightmares. <laughs> Nightmares for, for the Gen G squad. Just as I say, you can have your confidence in them. You smack me right down with that reminder of BLG waiting, waiting for them possibly at an international event. We've seen in the last couple of weeks, Bin really start to wake up, start to be that factor that we know he can be. That 1v5 giga Chad in the top lane, turning around any type of engage. This man has been brilliant in the last few weeks of this split. I think we've also talked about Knight starting to heat up, start to find his impactful moments for the team. And I think we've already talked about how Elk has really taken another step forward. And we already thought he took like two, three strides forward last year in developing into that star ADC. He is really shining through with this BLG team and in the increased expectations for them. 64 and 10 wins to losses overall between these top two squads. Uh, yeah, obviously 15 and one for BLG, 17 and one for Genji. Both going to have be the overall favorites for this playoff bracket in their respective leagues and will be highly anticipated to be representatives at MSI and showcase their region at another international event. Hope they both get there because they've been so damn good throughout the split. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beautiful people. As always, thanks for hanging and we will catch you on that flippity flip.